How's it going, YouTube? Mandrick here. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been doing a little bit of testing in Godot, this and that, and one thing I was curious about was Godot's C-sharp implementation. I've been really interested in this. Um, so we all know that Unity, you can use C-sharp in Unity, and it's exceptionally fast. Well, Godot has been implementing it through a grant from Microsoft, and I wanted to see how fast C Sharp was compared to GD Script in a purely computational workload. It also relies on a lot of memory management, but we'll not go there for this for um, this discussion. What I did is I wrote a merge sort algorithm or implementation from the Intro to Algorithms book written by CLRS. It's a pretty standard one for computer science majors, and I implemented it in Godot. And I have some pretty interesting findings. Now, I know that C Sharp is supposed to be faster than GD Script for computational workloads, so I was expecting C Sharp to be faster. But there's more to it than meets the eye. Let's get to it. So you can get an idea of what I did was I wrote a merge sort implementation within Godot using GD Script and C Sharp so I can compare them together. I also made my own variation where I threaded the merge sort. And I was able to do this because merge sort is a divide and conquer algorithm because you're dividing across it. And that allows you to assign each division to a new thread, which then allows you to modify the array safely across multiple threads and it ends up being faster. And that is reflected in the results for the most part. Because you're doing more work, there's more variability, but We'll get into those results later. For how I coded the merge sort algorithm, I used the algorithms Bible, aka Introduction to Algorithms by Thomas Corman, Charles Leiserman, Ronald Rivest, and Clifford Stein. If I mispronounce those names, I apologize. And I, I, I ripped it basically letter for letter. Now, seeing an idea of what's actually in the textbook, this is the code in the textbook. The variables are poorly named, but by looking at this, you can get an idea of what's going on. Doing a little bit of hindsight editing, I decided to come in and cut a lot of what I was talking about out of here, as this video isn't really about what merge sort does. Just know that I followed this implementation. So now we can move on to the results. What that looks like is this. As you can see at the top, it's just splitting the array in half and in half and in half until they're all individual members. Then it merges them while sorting them. So, for this, I ran, <laughs> I ran a lot of um, sorting tests through all these different implementations. I, I did something to the tune of 4,000 and some. So I have a lot of data points for my analysis. And I am quite surprised by this. So what you're going to be seeing is the average of each of these implementations over a hundred runs. And it's going to be the average time in microseconds. And the left column, you'll see the array length. In the bottom, you'll see the amount of time in microseconds taken. This line won't show too much other than two points I, I want to point out. So when the array length is one, it really shouldn't take any any time at all because it should just it's that that is the escape condition so it should be taken out immediately and as you can see using the gd script implementations and the source implementation they're all done with it in a microsecond on average which is to be accepted except for c sharp c sharp takes 21 microseconds that confused me initially however as it, the array length goes higher and higher, things get even more interesting. So you have the array length too. The C sharp time doesn't really change all that much. Same thing with when the array is length four. They're all within four microseconds of each other. However, the other implementations are strictly growing in the amount of time they take, which makes sense as they should be doing. And theoretically, they should be doubling each time. In practice, that's not how it goes down. So you have your your GD script threaded value, or actually my value, whatever, that I got. And you notice something odd at 16. 
where it takes 1.5 milliseconds or 1,563 microseconds to calculate. And there's a lot of variability in this, the fastest growing, which doesn't make any sense as there's more thre threads going at it. But now I actually have to manage the threads. Granted, there's probably a more efficient way of doing this. However, in the way that I am doing this, it makes it harder to stay consistent. However, that is it 1.5 milliseconds isn't going to slow down a game assume it even running at 60 frames per second so it's not that big of concern at this point this is assuming you want to sort an array of 16 items each frame which you shouldn't be doing anyway and if you are then hopefully you made it in such a way that you're able to run on a separate thread on its own not impacting the gameplay anyway however Things get interesting once you get past 64 elements. So, as you can see, the GDScript and GDScript threaded, they're, they're growing at an extremely fast rate. And when it comes to the array.sort and C-sharp, they're converging. The time that it takes for each of them to take, it's getting smaller and smaller. Granted, it's not strictly going smaller and smaller, but when you compare the lengths at 2048 and 4096. The, at 2048, the time difference between them is 86 millisecond, microseconds, whereas 4096, the difference is only 39. And at 8192, C-sharp becomes faster. However, it's not always gonna be faster. In my next number, oh, and actually before I get to that, let's also look at the GD script threaded and GD script. Once you get past 128 elements, the threaded becomes faster and stays faster. Now this makes sense because I ran this on a 8 core 16 thread system and the way I created the threads was I made one thread per system thread, so 16 threads total. Now if you look at the length of, uh, if you take the log 2 of 256 or you just do the mental math here, see. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256 is 8. 2 to the 8th is 256. That's 8 threads. I have 8 cores on that system. So at that point, I'm saturating the 8 cores on my CPU. Which at that point, the threads are being used much more efficiently. However, I also decided to do this um, method using much larger arrays. Let's get it to hundreds of thousands of array sizes. As you can see here, the C sharp implementation became slower again. However, at 160,000 elements, no, 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 my bad, at 320,000 elements, it became faster again. Through the numbers I found, so long as the array is sufficiently large, greater than 64 or so, then C sharp becomes faster. Then, or becomes on par with array.sort, which makes sense. They both use n log n implementations of sorts. However, array sort uses uh, GD Godot, the Godot game engine uses what is called uh, what intro sort, it uses a different sort of implementation based off of quick sort that is based off of another. Well, it, it uses a different implementation, so they shouldn't be the same anyway. However, the scaling is different, which is interesting. But either way, use array.sort, you'll be fine. What I wanted to see here was C sharp compared to GD script. So if we ignore array.sort, we can see that C sharp after, what is it? After an array length of four, C sharp becomes faster. And extremely so, as you can see in these these numbers here. Even if you're using 16 threads on a 16 thread system, the threaded version still takes 10 times as long as the C sharp version. However, the non-threaded version still takes about 2.5 times as long as the threaded version, which is fascinating. Now. This creates, as you can see, three distinct tiers of performance with this implementation. GD script being super slow, 
the threaded version being not as slow, and then the arrayed off sword in C sharp being the fastest. Now, why I find this interesting of C sharp and arrayed off sword basically being on par with each other is that the arrayed off sword implementation is a compiled version of the algorithm, while C sharp still has to go through the C sharp layer. There's extra layers that C sharp has to go through, which circles me back around to these numbers we saw at the beginning. I believe that when you run C sharp code, there's going to be some level of overhead you have to pass through for each function call, which means if you're using a function that has very little, very few things to do, then GD script will actually be faster than C sharp. However, once you get to a sufficiently large amount of data to process, I'm talking here, as you can see, an array length of between four and eight is where it crosses, then C sharp becomes faster. So in my mind, if you're doing any kind of work in terms of procedural generation, C sharp is easily the language to use. But if you're doing some basic, if player clicked on door, open door, then C sharp will actually slow the game down. And I was not expecting to see that as a result. Now, of course, if you're doing some basic things like that, you shouldn't be trying to thread every single command because then you have a bunch of extra things to be working on and you get variable results that would be hard to factor in. And you'll probably create, introduce stuttering in your game because of it. So the threaded is only useful when you're doing a lot of things, which makes me wonder how C sharp when you use that threaded, how fast that would become. However, that's not what I was really wanting to find out. I was just seeing if I could bridge the gap between C sharp and GD script by threading it. And it's, it's better, but it's not quite there. Now the next graph I'm going to show you is how well each of these implementations scale from the growing array lengths. So starting at two and going all the way up to 640,000, you'll probably note that I skipped 40,001. That's because I didn't run a test before 40,000, so there's no scaling to compare it to. And one, well, there's nothing that was ran before one, so you can't compare one to zero because you're dividing one by zero and well, the universe was spawned a black hole and all this is for nothing. But here you can see some pretty interesting findings and it really exemplifies what I'm taking away from this experience. So as you can see, the blue line is the most interesting of the lot because it, it goes all over the place, especially at the beginning. And that is the GD script threaded results and how well it scales. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the results from length four and dividing it by the, length, the result of length two to see how much it grew. So with an array length doubling each time, you want these results as close to two as possible. That would show perfect linear scaling. Of course, this being an n log n algorithm, it won't be exactly two, but the closer to two it is, the better. So what I'm showing here in this scaling is that when you're using a threaded implementation, you're gonna get variable results and it does flatten out if the workload is sufficiently large to use the threads you give it. But let's go ahead and toss out all the randomness at the beginning and just look at the data points at the end. And this is my, my takeaway and my findings of these different imp implementations. So you'll notice that between 128 and 4096, between those array lengths, the best scaling is through the threaded implementation, even going below 1.5. That means you can double the length and only increase the time it takes to compute it by 50%. But once you saturate the threads and it grows beyond what your threading can do, then it joins the rest of the pack at two, frame, at, um, two times scaling, which is where it should be. The next interesting thing is C-sharp. If you notice, C-sharp is usually the best at scaling or the second best. Now, 
S64 128, it is the best, going to the point where it's around 1.33. And why that's fascinating is that shows that there is some overhead when you're calling C sharp at the lower lengths of arrays that it's making up for that difference. It can't get rid of it, but it makes up for it. And once you get past 80,000 entries, C sharp remains the best scaling of all the different implementations the array.sort being the worst, meaning the longer you run the test, the more and more the C-sharp implementation grows better than it. Granted, we can't really rely on the array.sort implementation here as it's not a merge sort, so their numbers are honestly kind of irrelevant, but it's just interesting to see that the C-sharp language that they've implemented in here scales better than compiled code built into the engine. Now, if you look at GDScript and GDScript threaded again. So GDScript is kind of all over the place and it's an interpreted language. So it makes sense that it's the worst performing of the three merge sorts. Of course, ignoring array.sort. And GDScript threaded is actually not much better. Now, something I did find pretty interesting is that I did try a different implementation of the GDScript threaded test. And with that, I only used two threads. And the scaling was actually much closer to C sharp than it was to GD script. However, overall, it was still slower. And I believe the reason for the better scaling is because there are less mutex holds on arrays and there's less waiting for resources and there was just less going on in general. So it would be scaling better. However, it was also much slower than this result here. Overall, I found all this really interesting. And what I came up with was that C Sharp is faster. There's no doubt about it, but only if your workload is sufficiently large. If you're doing simple workloads, GD Script will actually be a faster language than C Sharp. And by simple, I mean things like, as I mentioned earlier, interacting with a door, even basic AI, where it's just a simple finite state machine, I can imagine being faster in GD Script than C Sharp. However, if you're dynamically generating a level, if you're going through some complex, an actual complex AI system, deep learning, machine learning, like some data computational heavy workloads, then C Sharp becomes faster. And that's once it can work past its overhead. I don't know where those 21 milliseconds came from whenever you're looking at the C sharp results of array length one. However, if the dev team can get past those 20 mil, uh, microseconds, then they can get past the overhead of C sharp. Then that will be the de facto language because it scales better than the rest. However, until then, I say if you're doing something basic, just use GD script. It's a lot easier to look at, it's a lot easier to code in, and as you can see, it's fast enough so long as you're not doing anything too complex. Overall, I found all this testing really interesting, and I think I'll be sticking with using GD script as my primarily primary scripting language within Godot. However, if I ever do procedural generation in terms of levels, C sharp has me. This is Mangek signing out. Have a good one.